This video will take you through the procedure of setting up the colony forming cell assay for hematopoietic progenitors. We will cover the thawing and aliquoting of methacalt medium, preparation of cells, adding cells to methacalt, and plating and incubating samples. Methacalt is available in a number of different formulations to meet your needs. The most commonly used formulations are available in both bottles and pre-aliquoted tubes. If you purchase a bottle of methacalt, you will need to thaw and aliquot the entire bottle. We do not recommend the repeated thawing and refreezing of methacalt. Methacalt preparation. Thaw methacalt at room temperature or overnight under refrigeration. Do not thaw at 37 degrees Celsius, as this can lead to problems with having a homogeneous mixture of methacellulose-based medium. Shake the bottle vigorously for one to two minutes. It is important that the shaking is vigorous to ensure adequate mixing of the components. At the end of the shaking, the methacol will be bubbly and opaque. Do not only invert or gently mix. Let the bottle of methacalt stand at room temperature for 15 to 20 minutes until the bubbles have risen to the top and the methacalt appears transparent again. Do not begin aliquoting before the bubbles have risen to the top, as the volume will not be accurate. Aliquoting and dispensing of methacalt should always be done with a syringe and blunt end needle. Three milliliter aliquots of complete methacalt are used for duplicate dishes. For more information about the appropriate volumes for different formulations or replicates, refer to the technical manual for human colony formicell assays using methacalt. Using a standard serological pipette will result in inaccurate volumes because the methacellulose is viscous and will adhere to the inside of the pipette. If aliquots will not be used immediately, store at minus 20 degrees Celsius until the expiry date indicated on the label or at two to eight degrees Celsius for one month. If aliquots are frozen, thaw at room temperature or overnight under refrigeration, but not at 37 degrees Celsius. Cell preparation. Prepare cells according to your institution's procedures. CFC assays on unfractioned cell preparations are possible. The colony enumeration will be easier if the red blood cells are removed. If present in the sample, red blood cells produce a background in the dish, which makes it more difficult to see the colonies. Methods to remove red blood cells include lysis with ammonium chloride, isolation of mononuclear cells using Ficol Pak Plus, and the isolation of nucleated cells by sedimentation over HEDICEP. Determine the total nucleated and viable cell count on your sample after processing. This can be done by using automated or manual methods, such as a hemocytometer with 3% acetic acid and methylene blue for the total nucleated cell count, and a viability stain such as tripan blue. The recommended plating concentration is dependent on the progenitor frequency, which is different between sample types and donors, and can change as a result of processing procedures. Two plating concentrations are recommended to ensure that one of the plating concentrations provides the appropriate number of colonies in the dish, not too few or too many. Enumerating under or overplated samples can lead to an over or underestimation of the number of progenitors. Adding cells to methacalt. Dilute the cells in IMDM plus 2% fetal bovine serum to 10 times the final concentration required for plating. For example, when you want 1 times 10 to the 4 cells per dish, prepare a cell suspension of 1 times 10 to the 5 cells per milliliter. Add 0.3 milliliters of cells at 10 times the final concentration to each 3 milliliter aliquot of methacalt. Refer to the manual for the appropriate volume of cells to add if you are using a different volume of methacalt. Vortex the tube for 4 seconds to mix the cells with methacalt. Vortexing the sample is important to ensure that the cells are mixed thoroughly and that the colony numbers are consistent across replicate dishes. Wait about five minutes until the bubbles have risen to the top of the tube before plating to ensure that an accurate volume will be plated in each dish. Plate and incubate. 
we recommend the use of 3cc syringes for plating. Draw a small volume of approximately 0.5 milliliters of the sample into the syringe. Dispense this back into the sample to remove the air bubbles. Draw the sample up to the 2.6 milliliter mark of a 3cc syringe. Plate 1.1 milliliters into the first dish by dispensing the sample to the 1.5 milliliter mark. Plate 1.1 milliliters into the second dish by dispensing the sample to the 0.4 milliliter mark. Repetition of this procedure ensures that a consistent, standardized method is applied every time. Swirl the dish, getting the sample to cover the entire bottom of the dish. Place dishes containing methacold and cells into a larger dish. Add uncovered dishes containing sterile water. This ensures that there is sufficient humidity so that the semi-solid methacellulose-based cultures do not dry out. Failure to maintain adequate humidity will lead to suboptimal colony growth. A water jacketed incubator with a full water pan in the chamber is required. Ensure that the incubator's temperature is at 37 degrees Celsius and that the carbon dioxide level is at 5%. The temperature and carbon dioxide level should be routinely monitored independently of the incubator's digital display with a thermometer and ferrite gas analyzer respectively. Consult the manual for your incubator to ensure that optimal operating conditions are being used. The colonies observed will depend on the time of incubation, the formulation of methacult that was used, and the nature of the sample. For example, normal human bone marrow samples grown in methacult H4034 optimum will have colonies derived from erythroid, myeloid, and mixed progenitors after 14 to 16 days in culture. Stem Cell Technologies offers a variety of tools to assist you in learning to enumerate colonies, including training courses, colony atlases, and proficiency testing. For more information on how Stem Cell Technologies can help standardize your assays, contact us at info at stemcell.com or visit our website.